Today we're looking at this essentially brand new battery jump starter box that doesn't work. So that'll bring you guys along while we dive into it and find out if it's just something simple or if it's something major. Keep watching. So my brother-in-law picked this up probably about a year ago, he says, last year sometime. And they were on a road trip, thought it'd be handy. You know, you charge cell phones, you got the inflator and then the jump starter. Thought, yeah, that'll come in handy. They set it back there, got back from the road trip, didn't even really look at it. Um, said months went by, decided to pull it out, and it didn't do anything. Didn't turn on, didn't power on, anything else like that. So he plugged it in to try to charge it, you know, a week later, like nothing. So just been sitting there. They're, they were barely in the process of moving, so he was just going to throw it away. I said, I'll take it, take a look at it, and see what it is. So just looking at it real close, I mean, nothing. I mean... This should be powering on the leads, but nothing lights up. None of the buttons do anything at all. So I figured we just open it up, see if there's just something simple. We plug it in, everything, like nothing happens at all. We plug it in, like it does nothing. No red light or green light, no nothing. So it doesn't look like a pure, maybe there's a fuse in there or something, burnout. He said he didn't use it at all, um, other than just powering it on and Clicking like maybe turning on the compressor for a second and then off. Looks like you can set the pressure on the compressor and it'll turn off at a set pressure. Kind of nice. So we'll just um, take out these Allens on the top first, I guess. Okay, we got to use the vintage Black & Decker screwdriver. I've been using this thing for the past week or so since I changed it over to lithium. I haven't had to charge it once. And it just keeps going and going. Oh, does it not reach down those holes? Attention. There you go. And just like they all are, it's just a big old sealed lead acid battery. Um, this one looks like it's a 17 amp hour. Most of the ones I take apart about 18 amp hour. Um, they never put out what they're rated. I think this one says there's, it puts out a thousand cranking amps or a thousand amps. Never. These batteries like this put out like 200, 250 amps, like max. So, and I virtually never use these jump starter boxes anymore. Ever since I started using these, like these lithium ones, this is one I rebuilt a while ago. You guys can't see it, but these things go, these things are like night and day better. This little teeny thing does 10 times better than this battery right over here will at cranking anything. So um, I guess let's check the voltage on the battery. I don't, I don't see that these terminals are loose. Like I thought maybe those would be loose or something. 12.8. That battery is fully charged. Like fully charged. It's interesting. But the compressor, like nothing works, no buttons work. Nope. Huh. I guess we can check voltages at different spots. If we got negative here and positive comes even over to here to this switch. Yes, what about so you turn this switch um, on the front to engage like the right right here to turn on the um, jumper cable so they're not always live so that should be down here and oh, some voltage is going through superficial like a superficial voltage so well, let's hook up a light sometimes you can just get a superficial voltage from from nothing so So we turn this on. What is there, is there voltage dropping? That battery is, I would say this battery is still a good battery. I thought this battery was just going to be zeroed out or a connection was going to be rattled loose from this sitting in his car or something. But no, that all looks fantastic. So I wonder if there's a fuse somewhere. 
So these leads are actually good. So you could actually jump start something because it connects directly to the battery, but none of the digitals. So like always, the computer's broken. So let's take a look at this, these digitals. So there's the screen. Here's our circuit board and stuff. Um, I've looked around this for a minute and there is no fuses. I don't see any inline fuses. So maybe we have to take off the circuit board or maybe I'll test where all the positive leads come in. Like we have this, we have a small black wire come from right here and then a positive one here and see if they're feeding the board correctly. Um, I guess this could be a fuse right here. Whoop. Oh, something just barely came on when I wiggled this. Oh, is it on? It is on. Do we just have a short wire somewhere? Because we have a black wire that comes, you know, you have your big black wire that goes your jumper lead, and then a small one, and then a small red one. So I wonder if this red one right here. And you know what? Is that it right there? Look right there. Let me zoom you guys in. That's it right there. My negative lead. Is it positive too? Nope. Just that negative lead right there is busted off. Sorry if that beeping's loud. So all we gotta do is solder on a negative lead. Let's see if I hold it on. Yep. If I hold it on, everything powers on like it should. Huh. Okay, let's solder that. So we're looking right here. And it looks like, if you look at the circuit board, you can see that this entire trace right here all touches that. That's all negative. So I can, it looks like it didn't bond to the pad very well, but I'm going to scrape back the coating just a little bit further and see if I can get a big ball of solder all the way out here. And they did a really crummy job on the, this is the negative over on the positive as well. So I'm going to see if I can get some float out here on the positive side as well. We'll take some flux. Take some rosin coarse solder. And I will just... Oh yeah, it flows out there nice. Now we'll just build it into this. Build a big old solder bridge. So it doesn't want to, so it has more surface area to contact, both of them, positive and negative. There we go. Most of all these solder joints on here are done by machine, but there's a fair amount where they had to add in these wires afterwards that are all hand soldered. So I'm just going to go through and just touch them up and make sure they all look good and flow them out. And it looks like the only ones they did was just like four right here. I'll just flow those out, but we should be done and then let's test it out. Okay, well we have it apart from the battery exposed. I thought we'd test it. So this is just a, a battery analyzer. Essentially it just tests the resistance across it. Um, it says it's um, putting out 219 cold cranking amps is what it'll do, what it'll do which is good. Um, like I said, these are all around like 200, maybe 250 if you have like a a 19 amp hour, this is a 17 amp hour. But yeah, it says it's putting out 219 cold cranking amps. And so if we write 219 CCA um, and the date, then I'll know exactly what it is and I can check it in years from now when it goes bad. This right here has been a lifesaver. I use it on all my car batteries and I just write on there how they're doing. Uh, it's pretty dang accurate. It'll give you the state of charge um, and the state of help. So it says it's at 92%, which could be, could be not. Um, it's pretty dang accurate on that. So this right here is a 100 amp load tester. So we're actually going to put a physical load on the battery through the system. Um, and it'll tell us. So turn it on. Get you guys in here. And 100 amps. Let's see what it does. And that's actually pretty good for one of these. 
I mean, this is meant to test car batteries and stuff like that, but that's actually not too bad for these jump starter box and why they're so weak. You know, it drops down to, it says 10.9 volts right there. I guess we can test the compressor now. I pushed the USB button and that's flashing. I'm not sure why. And I see a caution symbol. So, I don't know. So the compressor, um, we'll set it to 10 PSI or something. And I'll just put my thumb over it for a second. If we hit, oh, I already hit 10 PSI. That's kind of a nice feature. It shuts off automatically when it reaches out. Don't know why it's flashing. I wonder if the USB is bad. We've got to, got to let this thing sit for a second and shut itself off. Or maybe i got to plug the charger into it for a second or something. Okay, this thing will not shut off by itself. Um, I push the USB button and then it lit up. And then it just stays flashing. And it doesn't work. No USB works coming out of it. And I left this thing for 10 minutes and it stays on. I don't think it should just stay on for 10 minutes. I see a little USB symbol here and a flashing. So maybe there's an error in it. Maybe I need to disconnect the battery completely and let the computer chip reset itself. I don't know. But I got to open it back up and look and make sure the solder connections on this are good. I mean, this switch turned it on, but it says on and off. And it does nothing whether I push it and hold it. If I just tap it. I don't know. So I got to open it back up and investigate a little bit further because the thing needs to shut off. Otherwise, it's just going to drain the battery by itself. Well, easy enough. Good thing it's really not in there good. Push the button, nothing. But now I was following the wires and it looks like when I probably when I was putting the cover back on, I knocked that off. So if I just plug that back in, maybe now does it turn off? Yep. On. Off. Let's plug something into it. This is just like a USB map light. So if we plug that into it, I turn it on. Yep. Actually feels pretty sturdy. So I, when I was just putting the case on, the other case half, I must have just caught that edge and pulled it out. So put it back together again and we'll look be just fine. And I did test it and it does look like it's charging. It's funny because almost all of these do the same thing. It's just a... It's just like a wall plug, and they just wire it directly to it, and that's it. And then it just wires directly to the battery. That's all the chargers in these things are. Nothing fancy, but it's always funny to see. Everything seems to work now. Automatically goes off. LED on off. Well, we don't want to do alternate. Battery status. It says it's fully charged, which is pretty close. Hit again, it shuts off. That ah, beeping is super annoying. I should, uh, am, I might have to open it back up again and just cut out that beeper. Wow. Yep, I opened it back up. A lot of times I like to charge these jump boxes just with a battery charger, because they charge so much faster. Um, while it's charging, no matter what, it beeps constantly. So this is a little piezo buzzer and I just unsoldered it right off the board. No more beep. Wow. I mean, it just kept beeping like nonstop every 30 seconds whenever you have the leads powered on. Horrendously annoying. So there we go. Well, there you go. Garbage picking, essentially brand new thing, turns into a win this time. Not always, but this time it did. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll put a link to any specialty tool or anything that I used in this. But um, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye. I know your favorite sound in the world. Ready? Ready for this? Oh, yeah? You excited? Hold on. I've got three of them. Hold on, you ready? Here we go. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, good job. Can I have it back? Okay, here we go. Oh, good job. I'm a little rusty. Here we go. See if we can go a couple rounds. There we go. 
make sure I don't drop any. Just keep me. Oops, I dropped two. Hey, get up here. Okay, get right here. Get right here. Okay, you ready? Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. I, I told you to leave it way too long. Okay. Leave it. Leave it. Get it. Nope.